Hello friends, this video on matter and magnetism part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 4 before going ahead with part 5. Now let us look at some similarities between a bar magnet and a solenoid. This before some time I told you that if we observe the magnetic field lines pattern of a bar magnet and a solenoid, they are exactly similar. So here we will look at some other similarities as well between the two so that we can conclude something interesting out of it. So the first point again would be the magnetic field lines. The magnetic field lines are exactly similar for a bar magnet as well as solenoid. The next thing is, as I mentioned before, if you have a bar magnet and if you try to divide it into pieces, what happens? All the pieces turn out to be a magnet in itself. That means the monopoles cannot be separated. You cannot separate North Pole from South Pole or vice versa. So when you break the magnet, you get several magnets with North and South Poles. Similarly, if you have a solenoid, and if you break the solenoid, what happens? You get multiple solenoids. However, the magnetic uh, properties become weaker. When, when you break the longer solenoid into smaller solenoids, the magnetic properties are little weaker. But then you get the same kind of behavior as you had with the bigger solenoid. So that means this is another similarity that you can never break the bar magnet or the solenoid to get its constituents separately, right? So this is also a very important uh, similarity between bar magnet and solenoid. So now let us look at the third important aspect of similarity between the two. Here we will calculate the magnetic field at a far axial point. Far axial point means a point on the axis of the solenoid which is far away from the center of the solenoid. I mean it is quite a, at, a, at a far distance. Right? So we will try to calculate the magnetic field at a far axial point of a solenoid. First we will calculate it for solenoid and then we will see that it will match exactly to what we get in case of a bar magnet. Since bar magnet and solenoid share many similarities, so we can see that their magnetic behavior will be more or less the same. Now we will calculate the magnetic field uh, at a far axial point for a solenoid. So let us suppose we have a solenoid such that the length of the solenoid is let me denote it by 2L. Let us suppose this is the length of the solenoid and this N represents number of turns per unit length. So what do I do? Let us suppose that I consider like this is how my solenoid is, right? Now let us suppose I consider a small element dx. Let us say I consider a small element of thickness dx which is at a distance x from the center. So we have assumed one center. Let us call this as the line O. We call this as the center of the solenoid. And this is the axis of the solenoid. Now we want to calculate the magnetic field at a far axial point. So let us say that the axial point is this point P which is at a distance R from the origin of the solenoid and I have considered a small element of thickness dx which is at a distance x from the origin of the solenoid and we say that the radius of the these turns is a. I mean what is solenoid basically it is nothing but circular turns over and again so the radius of those circular turn is a and r is the distance of the point where we want to calculate the magnetic field due to the solenoid. Now from our previous lesson we know that magnetic field so from our previous lesson, we know that magnetic field on axis of a circular loop. You remember this is what this is something which we have derived in our previous lesson that magnetic field is equal to 
म्यू नॉट आई आर स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय टू आर स्क्वायर प्लस एक्स स्क्वायर टू द पावर थ्री बाय टू we have already derived this expression right where r is nothing but the radius of the circular loop and x is nothing but distance of the point from the center of the loop right this 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 is what we had derived in our previous lesson that if we want to calculate the magnetic field on the axis of a circular current carrying loop this is what the magnetic field would be so applying the same expression here we can write that for the small element dx for the small element dx there will be a small magnetic field at point p due to the small element dx so this will become mu not i what is r r is the radius of the coil here r is a right so this will be a square and now we have number of turns so what will be the number of turns number of turns will be equal to number of turns per unit length into the total length of the solenoid that means number of turns per unit length into the total length of the solenoid this divided by 2 into r square would be a square plus x what is x distance of the point from the center so distance of this point you will consider it from the element in that case center would mean not the center exactly it is from the current element right so this distance x is from the current element you remember that diagram right it was something like this this is the coil and you consider a small element here and because of that element you calculate the magnetic field at this point so your this distance is x and this distance is r right so here that x is nothing but distance from this small element dx to point p so that distance would be r minus x so this would be r minus x whole square to the power 3 by 2 therefore the total field would be integration of db so that will be equal to integration of this entire term mu not i a square n now this 2 and 2 will get cancelled okay there is a mistake which i made here when i am calculating the total number of turns here by mistake i took the total number of turns for the entire solenoid but here it should be the total number of turns for this small element dx so that will be n into dx instead of 2l it would be n into dx right so this will become mu not i a square n dx divided by 2 into a square plus r minus x whole square to the power 3 by 2 so we will integrate this now this x will vary from which point to which point if i say that the total length of the solenoid is 2l and i have considered this axis this origin at the center that means my l is varying from minus l somewhere here to plus l somewhere here right so this x will go from minus l to plus l right now what is my aim here to calculate magnetic field at far axial point what is far axial point such that point p is very very far away that means r is very very greater than x and r is also very very greater than a the distance of the point at which i want to calculate the magnetic field that distance is very very large when compared to the radius of the solenoid right so that means for far axial point when i talk about far axial point r is very very greater than x r is also very very greater than a so in that case my denominator where we have a square plus r minus x whole square to the power 3 by 2 this becomes approximately equal to a square plus r square because r is very greater than x so we can write r minus x square as r square this to the power 3 by 2 again r is very very greater than a so i can write it as r square to the power 3 by 2 so this is approximately r cube so now we can replace the denominator with r cube so now what we can write we can write therefore the magnetic field becomes mu not i n a square divided by 2 integration of dx divided by r cube from minus l 
to plus L. So this becomes mu naught I N A square divided by 2 R cube X from minus L to plus L. So this becomes mu naught I N A square into L divided by R cube. So this is the magnetic field of the solenoid. Now we know that, now we can replace certain things here. We, we can see that magnetic moment of solenoid. How can we define magnetic moment of a solenoid? Let me denote it by small m. So that becomes equal to total number of turns into I into A, where I is the current flowing through the solenoid and A is the area of the solenoid. Now, this can be written as what would be the total number of turns in the solenoid? That is number of turns per unit length into total length of the solenoid. This is current I and area would be nothing but pi A square. Right? So, from this we can see that M divided by pi is equal to N L I A square. Right? So, the, in, in fact, it is 2 N L I A square. Right? Now, we put this value in this expression. So, if you look at this expression, instead of N L I A square, you can replace this entire term. This entire term you can replace by M by 2 pi. So, what do you do? Put so what do you do? Put N L I A square in expression 1. So what do you get? Let me call this as expression 1. So expression 1 becomes B is equal to mu naught divided by R Q into M by 2 pi. Right? So this again we can write it as if we multiply both numerator and denominator by 2 then we can say that mu naught by 4 pi into 2m divided by r cube. So this is the expression for magnetic field at a far axial point for a solenoid. Now if experimentally it has been found that for a bar magnet the expression found for axial magnetic field is the same as this one. So that is why we see that there are a lot of similarities in the behavior of a bar magnet and a solenoid. So we say that far axial magnetic field for a bar magnet is same as that of a solenoid. That means for your bar magnet also the magnetic field at any axial point is given by this expression. Now magnetic moment of a bar magnet is same as a solenoid. So you see we, we noted down so many similarities between a bar magnet and a solenoid. So what are they? Let us quickly review. When I start comparing a bar magnet with that of a solenoid, the first similarity that comes into picture is the, uh, is the magnetic lines of force. Magnetic lines of force are the same for both of them. When we talk about uh, cutting uh, uh, the solenoid as well as cutting a bar magnet in both the cases when we cut a bar magnet or we cut a solenoid we get n number of solenoids or bar magnets right again when we calculate the far axial magnetic field we find that it is the same as that of a solenoid and a bar magnet also the magnetic moment of a bar magnet is same as that of a solenoid. So if, if you face problems where they ask you to calculate axial magnetic field for a bar magnet, you are supposed to use the same expressions as we get for solenoids. So we can say that a bar magnet may be considered as a large number of circulating currents analogous to a solenoid. That means a solenoid and a bar magnet are analogous to each other, right? So when we look at this bar magnet, we can consider this bar magnet as a large number of circulating currents because a solenoid is also nothing but too many circular loops joined together. So this bar magnet can be considered as equivalent to a large number of circulating currents analogous to a solenoid. Right? Okay. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more.
थैंक यू वंस अगेन